Hello everyone and welcome to the Chassis Variant series of myself, Critical Rocket, and here we are with the Hellfire, the only Hellfire variant that will be in the Chassis Variant series, unless future tech arrives in the game in which I might be able to make the Hellfire 3. Yes, the Hellfire 1 and the 2 are currently the only canon variants of the mech uh, in MWO, as the A, the B and the C are all made up by PGI to fill that juicy reinforcements DLC and on pack extravaganza. So yeah, the Hellfire 2, it was uh, developed a little later on, and is basically a slight modification of the original Hellfire, uh, taking advantage of ATM weaponry and heavy laser weaponry. So essentially it drops the LRMs in, in place, has two ATM-9s, has a heavy large, a couple of ER mediums, uh, the heavy mediums from the original, but it drops the heavy smalls for a single ER small and an extra double heatsink. The significant change here is the Clan XL300 engine which means it can run a much greater speed than the standard Hellfire before you make any customization to yourself anyway. So yeah, uh, the Hellfire 2 is just as hard hitting, it just has a slightly different style of play. It has, I believe, a total of 7 energy, if I double check it quick, let's do the calculations on hand here. Yeah, uh, sorry, it has 6 energy. Uh, three of them in the left arm, two of them in the right arm, and one of them in the left torso, and its two missile hard points are evenly distributed between the left and right torso. So overall, pretty good mix of hard points. Your arms are more important than your side torsos anyway, so if you lose them, you're going to lose a significant portion of your weaponry. And yeah, it's because it's a battle mech, you're not going to be making any pod switching, all that kind of stuff anyway. Uh, there's not really a hell of a lot of uh, background about that specific variant, and outside of that, um, stuff that I haven't really, may not have covered in the War Warrior previous, is that it was uh, essentially a mech that was mostly found in the Cloud Cobra Alliance, the Snake Alliance, with uh, Star Adder and the Cloud Cobra. Uh, but it was a part of that alliance, and as such, it was uh, primarily seen with those two clans, most of them being in the Star Adder, Tauman. But uh, later on other clans managed to get hold of a few of them and they sort of slowly spread out. But it's probably one of those mechs that aren't really that sought after by clan warriors. Compared to others, you know, Omni mechs were sort of pride of place if they could get hold of them. But certainly garrison clusters would usually have battle mechs over Omni mechs anyway. So uh, the, the more extra battle mechs that a clan townman could get hold of was always useful for their rear guard. So, yeah, essentially, that's kind of what all clan battle mechs are, is, within the context of the universe, realistically, the, the clan battle mech variants are, are actually kind of real line, they're second uh, provisional, they're garrisons, they're not really meant for frontline combat in the time of the clan invasion. As such, they're sort of seen as a slightly lesser variant, although certain totem mechs will be counted as being slightly more, sorry, slightly more important. But yeah, the uh, the Omnimax were usually the, the true blue clan warriors uh, piece of equipment. But still, it's an interesting aspect of uh, how the clans sort of tiered their mech sort of uh, structure. And yeah, so the I've really been enjoying the Hellfire. It's a, it's a damn good mech. It's it's fun. It's hot. It's definitely got problems with heat. I do like the fact that it's mask equipped, which is useful for quickly repositioning yourself to different parts of the map. Uh, damage potential is great. It's It's got so much punch to it, even in its default form. And I'm sure with tweaking skills and all that all that good stuff, you can really make something powerful out of this mech. At the 60 ton mark, it's, it's got a solid, solid fucking uh, amount of firepower available to it. In its fair com comparisons, it just... They don't have anything as good as this, I don't think. To be honest, it'd be hard pushed, you know, to come up with the same kind of range advantage, damage advantage. The only thing the Innisfear have on them really is heat. Is uh, they're not as bad for heat management, which is kind of funny because the clans are supposed to be better at heat management, but whatever. So yeah, I know balance and all that can't be like the tabletop, blah blah blah. So yeah, the um, the mech is, is genuinely fun. It's uh, just like the uh, just like the Blood Asp. Didn't care. I thought, yeah, okay, that's fine. Whatever. It's it's not not like one of the clan mechs I'd immediately jump to as a, as a oh pick a clan heavy, but it's uh, it's surprising. I I've, I do find it's pretty cool. Um, nice low angles and it's as I said, it's quick enough to get in and out. And I love using ATMs. The, the more mechs they add that give me ATM use, the the better. I really enjoy these weapons. They just they hurt. They really are powerful. 
in MWO, and uh, they're, they're much better as a kind of direct support fire weapon as well because of the shallow angle of the missiles. It does work a lot better, I think, than the LRMs on the, the Hellfire one, but I do recommend both of them. Um, I don't know whether... I don't know whether I'd recommend you buying it right this second at the time of this recording, being the same week that the mech came out. I'm not sure if it's it's that important, but it's fun. And when it comes out for Seabills, I think, you know, if you want to hold back, it's it's going to be a worthwhile investment. I don't really know what the A, the B, and the C are like. I don't have them, personally. Uh, so they, they're probably, on average, better. Than, than the other ones, because PGI usually make custom variants that are better in some ways, like they'll probably have one that has ballistics, for instance. In fact, let's have, while, while we're doing this, let's have a look at the page. Does it have one that has ballistics in it? Uh, yes, there you go, there's a ballistics variant. The C version's got two ballistics. They always do it, they can't help themselves. Uh, whenever they make up their own versions, they have to try and entice you into picking up the reinforcement package for some bonus. Be like, oh yes, but this one's this one's got ballistics. You know, it's like when they when they would sell a hero mech of a uh, of like, I think the Cicada when the X5 uh, came out. That was um, that was oh it's unique. Oh, it's a Cicada that can have ballistics. You know, um, at the time. Then they later on they brought out the uh, Cicada 3M, which I think had the Ultra AC, and uh, or it had like a bunch of ballistics. You know, they they, they would do that with hero mechs. And yeah, that's what they do with the reinforcement packages these days. It's sort of like, oh, we're not getting variants. Ah, oh, screw it. We'll just make some. I, re you know, I remember going back a while, and I remember when people used to argue, oh, we'll never see the Victor in game because there aren't enough uh, variants for it to fit the old uh, three mech system. And obviously that that went out the obviously the window. I don't know why people thought that though. Like, weirdly enough, because there were enough variants of the Victor. Oh well, going back a while. Jesus, only six years. Ah, oh, this has become rambly. We're near the end of this fight, by the way. This was this was a good fight, actually, in Frozen City. Uh, it was it could have tipped either way because it felt like it was it was going against the team when I was playing it, and I was getting a bit panicky. But uh, suddenly it just switched back. Oh yeah, I shred this guy's leg off. There you go, that grasshopper. He'd been standing there sniping the whole match because he was tickling me with those ER largest for quite a while. And uh, yeah, it doesn't doesn't go well for him in the end. I think he overheats or something, or he's. I leg him anyway, sort of melt his leg armor off, and then he just stands there, and I think eventually he just gets popped. He, he gets picked for parts, poor guy. Target just like destroyed. targeting him, and boop, there he goes. And again, what's the last mech? Yeah, which I think is a Mad Mark II. Uh, it's still scary, because uh, it hadn't taken a lot of damage, uh, so that was a, that was a, a tad worrying. Bit, uh, bit bum, bit bum squidgy, because I thought I'd end up having to go one on one with that thing. And this does not have the armor to survive against <laughs> an assault mech. It really doesn't. It's a fire support mech. It is not a frontline combatant. Uh, so yeah, that's that. So thanks for watching, everyone. Next week, Dire Wolves. Hey, have a good one. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.